Welcome back to the Grow 10, everybody. Uh, today we're going to go over one of the, probably the, the most asked question we get on the channel, and it has to deal with uh, nutrients, what you should be feeding, when you should be feeding, how much you should be feeding, and what I'm going to tell you is going to sound weird to you, especially because all the stuff you read about how important this stuff is. The brand you buy, the type you buy, it doesn't matter. They're all the same stuff on the periodic table. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, it's all the same stuff. I don't care what you buy. You can use the kind we do. We just do it because it's available everywhere and it's never hard to find it. Um, we just use General Hydroponics 3 point, but I'm telling you right now, you can substitute that with literally anything. Um, Using a one part or a two part is a little bit easier if you're a beginner instead of mixing the three. But other than that, um, this is literally, you could do your entire grow with just these and need nothing else. Now there is things that can help your plants. I'm not going to argue with that. But if this was all you had, I mean, you could literally even take the micro out of it. You, didn't, you wouldn't even have to run that, but we do. Um, but this is literally all you need. You need one bottle of Clonex. This is what you give them whenever they're seedlings or clones. This is what they use while they're in the Mondi Dome. Technically, you could keep feeding it to them all the way through, but you need one bottle of that. And then we use our GH3 part, which is for our NPK. Uh, you need one thing of micros. Doesn't matter the brand, it's all the same stuff. And then you need a bottle of CalMag. And this is literally all you could do for the entire grow. In this video, we're going to talk about simplifying this process because there is no other subject when it comes to growing cannabis that we get more questions on than this. And if you ever notice, if you see people's grows where their tips of their leaves are turning brown and you get all these edges right here that will turn brown you won't see it on ours ours are green that if they start turning brown on the tips that is because you're feeding them too much if you see them running down the sides where they're turning brown on the tips and the very tip of the leaf is turning brown and they're dying if that is what happens whenever you're giving them too many nutrients you won't see that on our plants um, because we don't feed the amount we feed this this is going to be different than anything you pretty much hear on YouTube because these people are feeding every day every other day two or three times a week we feed these plants we give them feed and then we'll do three waterings in between and we don't water every day if you guys are fans of the show you know we do not water until this bucket so I can pick it up with one hand and then it's light which judging by that it'll be, it'll be time to water tomorrow but it's been four it's been four days right now since we've watered this plant so that means that these plants get fed they only get nutrients around two times a month and being this size right here and they're going to be going into their second week of flower they're gonna be getting about a thousand ppms total for the month so that's 500 on the first feeding and then almost all the way to the end of the month, 500 in the second feeding. Now this, these instructions are for in soil because soil already has a bunch of nutrients in it and using liquid nutrients. Um, we like to keep everything extremely simple here. When these plants are little, like matter of fact, we'll go over to the veg tent real quick. In the veg tent, these plants over here are about half the size of those ones over there but they still are green and beautiful these plants right here get about 500 ppms per month and they are just sitting under a four bulb t5 with about 225 watts from the wall but they get about 500 ppms a month because they're smaller if you've watched some of our other videos we talk about how you are run a progressive system with the lights you do the exact same thing with the nutrients you can't blast these plants if you give them a ton of nutrients thinking this is going to make them explode the exact opposite is going to happen you are going to hurt them and you're going to stunt their growth it is always always easier to give them too little 
than to try and correct giving them too much. If you give them too much, you're already going to burn the leaves. The leaves are going to be damaged. There's no recovery from it. It's way easier just to give them too little, and then you could bump it up if it wasn't enough. If you start seeing them start yellowing up a little bit, you can just increase it just a little bit. But the way we like to do this is, as far as nutrient schedules go, we run an RO water machine, which means our water comes out at zero PPMs for when, it come, when we get it out of the tap because we run it through a uh, reverse osmosis machine. If you are running tap water, you really need to get a PPM meter and test your water and see where it's at. If it's around 220, 230, you're golden. You actually won't even need the CalMag because that stuff will already be in it. Now though, if it's over 250, like my water here is 430 ppm, I have no idea what's in it, but it's way too hot. I can't give them, how can I put 500 ppms of nutrients in when my water, and I'm only trying to feed 500 ppms, if my water is already 430 ppm and I'm trying to only feed 500, that means I can only put 70 ppm of my micro grow and bloom in. You see where we're going to run into the problems? If I just add that stuff into my tap water, I am now going to be giving them 930 ppms to a plant that I was only trying to give 500 ppms to. And if you give them too many ppms, that's when you're going to see they're going to get the burnt leaf edges. And if you're burning the leaf edges, you're, you're hurting them. You're stunting their growth. So get an RO machine or test your water. You really need a ppm pen. Um, if you're... If your pin, if you get a pin and your water is 200, a little below 250, you don't need to do anything. You can actually keep feeding tap water and then just do not give them CalMag because calcium and magnesium is is the stuff that is what you're picking up in that pin. So if you if you long as you're under there, you're fine. If you're not, you have to get a different water source. You cannot feed them 400, 500. I've seen people with 600 ppm, especially if you have a water softener in your house that's putting sodium into your water to make it softer, th those numbers can get as high as 900. So you have to get an RO machine, and there's a couple, th you can find them anywhere. They're about 100, 200 bucks, but they make a ton of water, and you don't ever have to go anywhere else to get your water. You can just make it into five gallon buckets like we do. You can see our, we got a five gallon bucket sitting right there. I fill that thing up on water day. I mix all my nutrients I'm gonna put into it, in it, and then I just water from there. So that's the that's the main thing that people mess up with this is they're just adding it to regular tap water and they have no idea what the PPM is on their regular tap water. Uh, the other big thing is, uh, this seems silly, but don't test your pH until after you've added all your nutrients in. I've seen people that take their pH reading before they've added this stuff in. This stuff changes the pH balance of your water, especially micros. Micros drop it considerably. And don't ask me why, it just does it. I can't, I'm not a scientist, I can tell you, I can just tell you from experience what happens. If I add those micros, our water here is about 6.8 naturally pHed. If I add micros to it, it'll be 4.3 after the micros are added into it. Um, so add all your stuff in one at a time. After you put it in the bucket, stir it so it spins around, then you can go on to the next. After you have added everything you are going to add that feeding, then check your PPM, and then check your pH. As long as your pH is above 5.0 and below 7.0, you are golden. You do not need to shoot for 6.35 or in between 6.2 and 6.5. That is all nonsense. Anyone that tells you about that, that you need to feed exactly at six point, just leave their channel, come back over here as usual. They are crazy. You do not need to do any of that. As long as you're above five and below seven, feed it. If you are above seven though, you need to bring that down. Just like if you're below five, you need to bring that up. Uh, another thing is, um, as I was talking about at the beginning of the video, this is a progressive system just like the lights, you can't give them too much light, just like you can't give them too many nutrients. Are you noticing the theme here? Don't overwater them, don't overfeed them, 
and don't give them too much light. Those are the three biggest problems new growers have. And it is the it is 100% the reason you are not getting the yield you are wanting to out of these plants. You're, you're in the tent every day messing with them. They hate that. You're overfeeding them trying to blow your shit up you're not going to blow your shit up. It's, you're going to have a negative effect on it. You're giving them too much water. Another part of mothering and smothering these plants is you're constantly in here and you're like, oh, it needs water. Oh, it needs water. These things want more dry days than wet days. So if I feed on or if I give them water on Monday, I'm not going to. And these people are watering every other day. So you've got Monday water, Tuesday no water. Now they're tied for dry days and wet days, which even so Tuesday they're still wet and then you're feeding again on Wednesday you're not giving these roots any chance to breathe which I'm tying this back into nutrients so give me a, a break here if you're not giving these things a chance to breathe you drown the root hairs if the root hairs are drowned they can't pick up the nutrients so you're gonna see, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see these leaves fading yellow and you're gonna think oh no I'm shorting them on nutrients I need to give them more this is a vicious cycle and it's what every new grower does so what do you do? You bump up your PPMs too high. And whenever you do that, then your leaves are still going to yellow because you've rotted the root hairs. And now your leaf edges are going to burn because you've got so much, you've got, you know, 14, 1500 PPMs in the soil and the plant is literally dying. So you, you take a plant that is dying because you are overfeeding it and overwatering it and then you expect it to give you good returns from the yield, it's never going to happen. If you just slow down and pay attention and you don't give these things, don't try and be a mind reader or a psychic. Don't give it anything until it asks for it. Don't give it more light until it asks for it. Whenever you see these tops starting to get a little bit stretchy, like, I mean, you can see them now, they are they are literally trying to stretch up towards the light, which means next week we're going to be turning on our third bulb or our third set, of, third set of bulbs. Don't give them anything till they ask for it. This is especially true with nutrients. Whenever I tell you, especially if you're growing in soil, nutrients matter almost zero when you're growing in soil because there's just so much of it in there. The amount these things require whenever they're this big you know we got a nice full canopy here we're all, we're in halfway through week one of flower these things get like 700 tops right now next week we'll start moving them up just a little bit because the first weeks of flower they start growing pretty well but i'm telling you guys just slow down bring it back relax this is a uh, this is a marathon not a sprint but i mean i don't know too many other ways I can explain it other than the overwatering and the overfeeding is what's killing and well and too much light it's the trifecta that everybody does when they're new so just slow it down if you have any questions about nutrients or feeding schedules just leave us a message I'll be happy to answer any of your questions a lot of people won't believe this information whenever I tell it to them about how little this stuff actually matters you give it just enough and not more it, it's it's always easier to bump it up if you need to but you won't especially if you're growing in soil but leave us a comment if you have any other questions if i miss something i know i get i get going all over the place a little bit in these videos just because i have so much information in my head i'm trying to get out to you guys that i'll uh i, I kind of veer off course sometimes but not always um oh quick tip as see just as i'm talking your micros this is every two weeks so if you're feeding like I feed feed water 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 feed that's the entire month pretty much um, this is every two weeks you only do this once every two weeks and you can sprinkle a little bit on the pot whenever you're transplanting um, it doesn't matter what order you put this shit in anybody says that is a moron I don't know what, to, what else to say you can put the bloom the grow and the micro in I recommend putting the micro in last because it's, it's fucking real dark. You can see it in there and it clouds up your markings on your, on your little syringe so you can't read them. So I recommend putting this in last, but bloom, uh, grow, and micro, those are the three things we use 
once again, it doesn't matter. You can use a one part, especially one part super easy for new beginners. Um, these, uh, the, the readings, the charts they give on the side of the box, those are for if you're doing a thousand watt grow, don't read those charts and, and say that's what they need to be fed. You're gonna burn your shit up. Another quick tip. All right guys, this video is 15 minutes and I feel like I'm, I'm rambling. Uh, good news though, we've hit 200 plus subscribers on WeTube. Uh, the YouTube channel has gotten like 70 subscribers in the last week, so we are only 40 subscribers away from our seed drawing. If you've made it 15 minutes into this video, I'm super impressed. You guys are true fans. You realize the information is correct. Uh, but remember to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Wife's calling me. Gotta go.